stick around and I'll show you a few ways to get your character or an object moving around in your game. Let's get stuck into it. To start, create a new c -sharp script and call it player controller. Now attach it directly to your player object. To show you the basics, let's use this code. Inside your update function, create an if statement checking if the player presses W on their keyboard. If so, move the player one unit forward. Vector3 forward is shorthand for new vector3001. Now in the editor, press play and then W on your keyboard. Your character should move one world unit on the Z axis. But this is a bit boring, so let's continue. Let's alter the code. First, add a serialized float called speed so that we can adjust it in the editor. Next, we need to gather player input to determine which direction to move. We create a new vector3 called dir and we set x to input.getAxis horizontal, 0 for y, and input.getAxis vertical for z. This uses the built-in Unity input manager. Ensure you spell these exactly right or they won't work as expected. Next, we reference our object transform and use the built-in function translate. Feed in the direction we just gathered, multiply it by our speed variable, and then to ensure we have a balanced experience across multiple devices and frame rates, multiply it once more by time.delta time. Press play in the editor and use the WASD keys or the arrow keys to move your character around. You'll notice it's very slow. Let's pump the speed up a bit using the speed float we exposed in the script. Awesome. A downside to using Translate is that it directly manipulates the transform position of the object, which means you will push right through other colliders. This may or may not be a problem for your game, but keep watching and I'll show you how to move around using Unity's physics engine so that we can collide with objects as we'd expect. Add a reference to the player's rigid body. We'll collect the direction the same as before, but instead of using Translate to set the position directly, we'll instead set the rigid body's velocity. In the editor, add a rigid body to your player object. Freeze the rotation on all axes and set interpolate to interpolate to provide a smoother experience. Also, ensure you have a collider attached. As you can see, the player now collides properly, as well as starting and stopping with a bit more realism. If you really want to make this a party, let's add a rudimentary jump to our character. First, add a new serialized float called Jump Force. We need to change the way we gather player directional input to ensure we're not messing with our jump velocity. Grab our input and multiply it by our speed variable. Next, let's set our y velocity to whatever it's currently sitting at, which will change when we jump. Set our rigid body's velocity to this new value. To get jump working, check if the user presses spacebar, and if so, add force to the rigid body. Feed in up as the direction and multiply it by our jump force. Press play and smash the spacebar to make your player jump. Heck yeah. Before you leave, subscribe to my channel for more tasty tutorials and good luck with your game development journey.